And Stefan, as I said earlier, is the best-selling author um, for Business Networking for Dummies, uh, Instant Networking, and Win the Room. He's also the founder of the Networking Retreat. So, Stefan, good morning to you. Morning. Thank you so much for inviting me along. Um, <laughs> I'm from all the way in Oxford, so I feel like a bit of an interloper this morning, but it's, <laughs> it's lovely to be here. Good stuff. And you've shown me up with the shirt there, so uh, you, 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 you've already got that on me. Um, Stefan, uh, just a, before we get into it, a, a quick introduction to yourself. I've, I've sort of touched on it there, but um, better from yourself there. That's very kind of you. Um, my name's Stefan. I'm the author of Business Networking for Dummies and a couple of other books as well, Instant Networking and, and Win the Room. I work with um, a load of businesses up and down the UK and in other places as well and, and help them get more from networking. Um, some of the clients that you'll have heard of, I work with BT. Um, I'm on their business podcast um, talking about networking and other stuff. Lloyd's Banking Group, um, a company called Okema that you won't have heard of. Um, and yeah, loads of other organizations as well. And I'm, I'm really flattered to be here this morning. It's lovely. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Stefan, for getting into it. And we will ask everyone, so if you've got any questions specifically for Stefan, the Q&A tab is open just to further along from the chat box there. Chuck them in there and we will happily pick them up as we go along. But I'm really excited to have this conversation, Stefan. So let's get into it. I mean, Stefan, Firstly, what are, when, when you're working with businesses, when businesses come to you about can you help us with our networking, what are one of the, what's one of the biggest myths you, you have to dispel first and foremost for a lot of these businesses? People judge their return on investment in the wrong way. So the, the networking event like this morning should only be the start of the conversation. And, and people try and get the whole of the conversation into the 90 minutes or the two hours. People think that they should turn up and come away with sales. But, but guess what? No one turned up this morning to buy from you. No one turned up this morning to, to buy from me. So I think Pete, the biggest myth is that when people start networking, they somehow think that it's going to be a room or a virtual room full of people who are waiting to buy from them. Um, and that's not the case. That's not how the return on investment on, on networking works. So, so yeah, that's the, the, the biggest myth, I think. Yeah. And when, when you talk about how long networking should take to work, I mean, what, how would you answer that? Because we see it a lot when, when businesses join Network My Club. You know, we really want people to buy into the fact that networking is a long-term play. You know, if, as soon as you're joining a networking group, if you're looking for returns within that first month, two, three months, you're coming into it with that with that wrong uh, with that wrong idea and that wrong mindset so how long would you say networking takes to work and we'll come into some tips and tricks as how that can you can accelerate that i guess but typically what would how would you answer that yeah i'm, I'm glad you mentioned that last bit because people can make sales and they can make sales early on if if they get it right and think about it in the right way the, the question about how long it takes is is always an interesting one because if I turn up here this morning and never get in touch with, with any of the, the, the lovely people who I've spoken to ever again, or if they see me in a year's time, it's going to take years and years. So it's, it's not about time. It's about immersion. It's about how much effort people put into building up the relationships. So the more effort you put into it, the quicker it will be. So that's that's avoiding giving tips as such, but it, it's not about how long it'll take. Just because I've met you this morning, in six months, three weeks and one day, you won't automatically be ready to buy from me. It doesn't work like that. It, it's all about how much effort we both put into the relationship. The trust thing, whether people trust you, because in networking, we talk about the, the no like and trust quite a lot that doesn't just come automatically. It's up to, to us to put the effort in to, to build trust. Mm. And, and a real life example is that you wouldn't have just trusted me to put me on stage in front of your, your members this morning if we'd only, you know, if there was only 15 seconds of interaction in the past. The fact that I've been out there doing this for years and, and building up the trust 
uh, is what's led to, to you to trust me to be here this morning. The trust is is an important thing. That was a long answer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's absolutely fine. We hear that a lot with that whole no like and trust thing, which I think a lot of you in the room and uh, and you would have heard a lot as well, Stefan. But Stefan, let's bring it into kind of the future of networking and something that, you know, I'm sure you've seen like everyone else over the past 16 months that networking has had a drastic shift to online and I'm sure you see like we do you've got some of that are in the camp that can't wait for live events to come back you've got some are in the camp that are just really keen to continue with online and you've got those that are in the middle so for you given that a lot of your work and a lot of your books were written pre-pandemic when it was just live events what things will you take from online or will you sit or could you relay to to businesses in the room to to adapt to online to continue to uh, to make the most from networking? And what what's been the biggest learnings from you effectively in the last sixteen months from the from the online transition? I think hybrid is a word we're going to hear a lot more of going forward. And and I, I we 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 haven't talked about it, so I don't know you guys' plans. But what I'm hearing from a lot of organisations is that they're going to move to having you know so many weeks of virtual events maybe three weeks virtual and then one week the fourth week actually face to face that's that's what i'm hearing a lot not not just around the country uh, around the world um some of the the conferences and business shows i'm involved in are looking at how they they do real hybrid so they have some people actually in the room but maybe you know, as a speaker, if if the event is somewhere else, maybe I don't travel there. Maybe I speak from home and appear on a screen or something like that, which what's happened to me is that I've saved 15 to 20 hours a week traveling and 1,500 to 2,000 pounds a month traveling expenses in, in the last year. So that's that's been huge. And just the amount of time I've freed up to, to do other stuff. So I'm going to want to continue to do an awful lot of stuff like this. A um, couple of things that, that that I would say, we've all sort of got used to virtual networking events now. So we're all a lot better with things like our camera angle and our lighting. Um, when, gosh, back in March and April of last year, you know, it was mainly everyone had their phones on their laps and were in darkness and that sort of thing. A couple of really specific things that, that I do when I'm, delivering my 40 or 60 seconds at a virtual event or, or when I'm speaking like this, I'm, I'm making sure that I speak to the little camera over there. Because <laughs> um, if I maintain eye contact with you, it means that everyone else is looking at the top of my head, even though I'm looking directly at, at, at your eyes now. Um, and the other thing that I do, and it sort of starts to answer Anders' question as well in the Q&A about rituals and preparing and that sort of thing, um, I... I have a little notebook next to me and write down the name of everyone that I've I've spoken to this morning so that I can connect with them afterwards mm. so I see a lot of hybrid events a lot of events which are going to be part virtual and, and part face to face um it's enabled me to network in well Canada and Australia very particularly where I've been networking as as well as the UK over the last year it, it really has opened up the opportunity for all of us there really is you know, no excuse now to not build a national, international, regional audience if if we want to do that. It's it's really opened up the world. Yeah, we we're, we're using the term blended as opposed to yep. hybrid. I mean, we we see our networking schedule and we've recently released that to uh, to our community that it will be part in-person events and part online events because for us with our network being across the southeast and a bit further rather than a, a location specific network we've seen members meeting from lots of different places so we want that to continue and we want that to spill into the in-person events as well so my, my view is that people have to adopt both uh, there will be people that prefer live and prefer the online but uh, you if, if you if you're going to make the most of it I think you've got to be in both both forms um, and how you how you divide that is really your personal decision at, at that point so when it when it comes to any of the any of the principles to networking Stefan do you feel that they've they've remained the same through online do you feel there's any specific ways that people need to adapt their methods whether they're walking into an in-person event or coming to a live event I believe that the the imperative to follow up and keep in touch with people after events is 
even more important now we've moved into virtual. So that whole thing about connecting with, with everyone on LinkedIn, um, and anyone here is welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn and actually putting effort to keep in touch with people afterwards to, 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 to keep in touch with people, to bring value to the conversations and then to make sure that people know what you're, you're selling. I think the importance of what happens after the event is even greater now we're virtual than, than it is in, in real life, but in general terms, that's the most important bit anyway. What people do after the networking event is is always much more important than, mm. than what they do in it in, in any case. Yeah, it's a good point because when a lot of the things I'm hearing around uh, online events is that people can log in at 10 o'clock and they can log out at midday and then they can get on with their day and they can go into other events. But my tip is for people to block out half an hour straight after the event so you don't go from your laptop to carry on working what you were working on before and you take that time because it's much easier, I think you were alluding to there, it's much easier to forget about the follow-up process with online and it's easy to condense your your calendar with lots of online events because they are so accessible. However, don't forget about that process after the event, which is so crucial. And one of the questions that has come into the Q&A is, how do you follow up effectively? What are your methods? What are your tips? So I, I, I spotted the question and, and thank you um, to who, who, whoever's asked it. We get confused and I'll, I'll tell you why we get confused because following up is, is something that I do in sales. When someone invites me to speak or when someone wants to work one-to-one -one with me, following up is, is then something that I do with, with that person because they've expressed interest in buying from me. And then I make sure I follow that up through to, to the, the logical conclusion. Um, everyone who arrived at the networking meeting this morning doesn't want to be followed up by, by you. And that's where we get confused about it. So it's not about following up. It's about keeping in touch. And it's, it's slightly different because you're not chasing people down to buy from you. You're keeping in touch for the sake of keeping in touch, for the sake of continuing to build and strengthen your, your, your network. So what I do and what I train lots of people to do, connect with everyone that you meet on LinkedIn, strive to be the first to bring value to the relationship. So what can you do, whether that's a piece of content that will help the other person, whether it's a, a recommendation or a referral that you can put in their path, or whether it's just spotting something on the news that you think they could talk about, then I put loads of content out, loads and loads of helpful advice on networking. I also intersperse that with little um, adverts. I, I show people what I'm selling. So as well as being the first to bring value to the relationship, I make sure that people can see what I've got for sale. And then some of those people connect with me and, and ask me about it. Where we get confused about following up is when we start treating everyone in the room as if they're a, a prospect. And I, I come from a, a lengthy sales background and it's, it's just not the case. So if someone's expressed interest, then make damn sure you, you follow up with them and that you have a process for doing so and you know how to have those conversations and, and find the good people around you in this network who can help you if, if you don't know how to have those conversations. For everyone else that you meet, keep in touch, but make sure they can see the till. Make sure that they can see what you're selling at the same time as well. Mm, I love I that. That point. makes sense. It does, and I love that point about be the first to bring value to the relationship, and that is quite an easy thing to do because it doesn't have to be a referral like you say it doesn't have to be an introduction it can be a resource or a link or something that could help them with with what they do or some of the challenges that they're that they're facing so yeah that's that's a great line I'll I'll, uh, I'll be using that one moving forward in in your um in your history of working with businesses Stefan in your career one of the questions that come in is what's your best networking success story um, so uh, I, I guess there's there's two answers to this. One is being at the business show at XL and personally, and I, I was there for the seventh year running twice a year, two days every time um, and ending up um, at, at the Italian restaurant on the the evening networking event for exhibitors, um, which which in, usually involves quite a lot of beer and wine. So it's, it's got another name but let's call it the evening networking event for exhibitors um and i i ended up sat next to the publishers of of the dummies series of books um and they had seen me speak earlier on today and, and wanted a conversation with me so for, for me personally that's my my biggest success story um 
for clients. I've um, uh, had someone who, who, who worked with me and immediately won £2,700 worth of business that afternoon. Um, and someone who saw me on stage who went and sat in a cafe and, and used some of my tips <laughs> and followed up with people that night and made a sale there and then. That stuff, when like, like with all of us, you know, when people message you on LinkedIn and say, I've done this and it worked, that's the stuff that that, that really turns me on and, and gets me going. For, for me personally, and I, I wasn't sure what the, the whether it was my personal success story um, or, or client success stories, yeah, you know, winning people like my publishers, um, Lloyd's Bank, I, I met at a networking event, BT, I met at a networking event. I just want to knock this on the head because people mm. have said this to you as well, Brad. People say that there's there's not bigger businesses at networking events, but there, there are. People just don't always look for them. Mm. Absolutely. Stefan, a question's come in from Joe Sevier. So Joe, hopefully I've pronounced the surname right there, but he says, hi, Stefan, do you think it's harder to main interest from new prospects online rather than in person? If so, what are your thoughts? Um, it, it's, it's different rather than harder. Um, so we're all having to, to learn new skills. What I would say is that all of this, we, we should never try and do everything online. Um, Everything that I do, and, and you know, I, I post on LinkedIn between five and 10 times a day. I maintain relationships with lots and lots of people. All of this is just a gateway to an actual conversation. What, what I would say in answer to the question, move the conversation to phone or Zoom as soon as you can. If it's a prospect, if someone has actually expressed interest in what you're doing, then move the conversation um, face to face or Zoom or telephone as quickly as you can all of this should only be a gateway in terms of of other people people who haven't expressed interest but you express that you you want them to remain interested in you go and be interested in them go and find what they're posting on comment on it mm. like their stuff share their stuff they're going to notice you if you be interested in them but what so many of us do is just want everyone else to be interested in in us. So as much as I post quite a lot on LinkedIn, I spend lots of time every day liking, commenting, and, and sharing posts of people that I've met because it's a lovely thing to do. It helps them. I, I've got quite a big audience these days, but also they come back and pay interest in in what I'm doing. People tend to, to want to reciprocate. I, I really hope that answers the question properly. Yeah, I, th I think it does. And it's um, something that I took from that is really the online networking is just another piece of a, it's another component to your arsenal going out there to develop business and grow your network. So don't see it as one or the other. It's just another component and, and work around uh, improving that. Um, Stefan, we are running out of time. Um, I would encourage everyone to check out Stefan's books. Talk to us about the networking retreat as well, Stefan. How does that work? The networking retreat, like everything else, I'm just going to pop my LinkedIn in yeah, the chat. There it is now. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for the chance to do an advert. The networking retreat, I get 12 people together here in Oxfordshire for two days, two nights as well. We all stay in the same hotel. And it's a really intensive workshop where I write people 60 seconds for them. We work out how to follow up with people. We build people's LinkedIn and we also network together. Been running it since 2015. And the people who came to the first one are still doing business with each other. Um, so yeah, look out for that. Once the world opens up again, I'll, I'll be running it again. I'm running a ton of online courses in the meantime. Fantastic. Great, Stefan. And very lastly, what would be your one piece of advice for someone starting out in networking? Do it. Go, go out there, put yourself out there, get a little bit out of your comfort zone if you need to. I was terrified of networking. Remember that it's, it's not about what you say at the event. Don't get too hung up on thinking that you've got to come up with some clever pitch at the event. Meet people, connect with them, continue the conversation afterwards.